Okay, in this video I want to do a volume of revolution problem um, using disks and washers. Um, and so the problem we're going to do here, so I've already got a little bit set up, we're going to do the region bounded by y equals x cubed, y equals x, and we're going to rotate that in this case um, just about the x-axis. Okay, so we'll go about the good old x-axis here. Um, and you know the line y equals x, there that is, y equals x cubed, um, I just drew the, drew the portion, um, and I should specify here, because I want the portion that's just in the first quadrant, so I should even say um, x is greater than or equal to zero, so that'll just give us the, the part in the first quadrant. And the formula we're going to use here, the way I like to think about it is it's pi times the outer radius squared minus pi times the inner radius squared. So I'm going to do some variations on this one um, in some other videos as well. And the way I think about the outer radius, um, the way I think about that is whatever line I'm rotating about, I draw a line perpendicular to that. It's going to go through my region and then just right before it's about to exit the region. That's what I call the outer radius. Okay, so basically I have to think if I'm at some generic x-coordinate, what is the length of that generic x-coordinate? And that's what I'm going to fill in into my formula. Okay, so we'll figure out the limits of integration here in just a second. You can, might be able to even just guess them here. So it says the outer radius, if I'm at some random x-coordinate, well, the length of this arrow would come from the y-value, which is just coming from the function. So the outer radius would be just x-squared minus pi times the inner radius. Well, again, I do the same thing. I, I start at the line I'm rotating about, and I draw it until it just touches the region. And then, in this case, I think, well, what curve is it hitting? The curve that it's hitting in this case is x cubed, but again I have to square that. We're integrating this with respect to x, so that means the limits of integration are going to come from the x-axis. Well, the smallest x-coordinate that we're using here is 0. Well, to get the largest one, in general, you have to set these things equal to each other and then solve. I mean, you can guess probably the, the value. But again, just a little bit of algebra refresher. Set them equal, um, then make one side 0. We could factor out an x. We would get x squared minus 1. Um, if you factor x squared minus 1, we would get the solutions x equals 0 from the first part, and then positive and negative 1. And again, if you kept graphing, these things would cross over here at negative 1, so that's why we're getting all three solutions. But clearly in the first quadrant, this will be the x-coordinate of positive 1 where they're hitting. So this would be 1, 1. The y-coordinate's irrelevant in this case. All we need is the x-coordinate. And that's now the setup to calculate the volume. So remember, volume should always be positive. So if this doesn't work out to be something positive, certainly you've done something wrong. So let's just go ahead and integrate this in one fell swoop. We could factor the pi out. I'll get x squared. If I integrate that, I'll get x to the third over 3. Um, again, I factored the pi out. I would have x to the sixth. If you integrate, that'll be x to the seventh over 7 from 0 to 1. Well, all we have to do now is plug our limits of integration in. If you plug 1 in, you'll get 1 third minus 1 seventh. When we plug the lower limits of integration in, we'll simply be subtracting away a bunch of zeros. So our answer here will be pi times, get common denominators, multiply top and bottom of this one by 7, top and bottom of this one by 3. Um, we should get 7 minus 3, or 4 over 21 or we could write it as 4 pi over 21. That will be our volume of this, uh, this, uh, this region when it gets revolved about the x-axis.